All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so good afternoon. Um, my name is Meredith. I'm with the Harrington Library is my home base, but um, you know we we have our five locations with five lovely buildings full of staff members, all willing to help. Um, we will be covering the very basics of Google Sheets, which is a uh, web application or web app for spreadsheets, which is very similar to Microsoft Excel. So what we'll cover today is how to create or import documents. We'll also cover how to do the basic navigation of a spreadsheet, which if you're used to working in Excel, will all seem fairly familiar, but we'll cover it anyways, just in case we have a few people who have never worked with this Excel before. We'll also cover editing and formatting spreadsheets and then also how to print and download files. If we have some extra time, we'll get to some other topics if we can, but uh, we can also hold those for a later program, maybe some advanced Google Sheets. If y'all are interested, please do let us know at the end of the program. Um, so a quick question for all of you. I think we have a poll, is that right, Ms. Jamie? Yes, ma'am. I do have a poll for how everyone plans to use Google Sheets, which I'm going to go ahead and launch now. So you should be able to see how you plan on using Sheets, whether that's for personal work, school, or you're just not sure yet, go ahead and click whichever options make the most sense for you. And you can select multiple ones. Um, this is a multi-choice option poll. And while people are answering that, I'll go ahead and elaborate a little more. So to use Google Sheets, all you need is a Google account, which if you have a Gmail, you already have one. It's a free account, so um, Sheets is free to use. Um, it is accessible through both the Google Sheets app on the browser and through Google Drive, which is another web-based app that is a storage um, cloud storage app that allows you to keep all of your documents that you use through the Google Suite, which is very similar to the Microsoft Office Suite. Um, you can edit Excel documents directly if you do upload them or convert them to sheet format if you want to uh, keep the format uh, within the application. Um, and some uses for Excel, uh, Sheets similar to Excel, spreadsheets for budgeting, um, task lists, project planning, and then you can also use it if you get really into the formulas and functions, analyzing data with charts and filters. So that's just some stuff we can look at as we go through this. So it looks like we've got most people have responded to the poll. So let's go ahead and share our results that we've got. So it looks like most of you will be using it for personal uses, which I totally am right on board with that. I've got it for my own personal budget as well as some uh, lists for reading uh, series that I want to keep track of and that sort of thing. Um, it looks like we've got a few that are uncertain and one person who wants to use it for school. So hopefully uh, some of the stuff we share today will help inspire you in ways to use sheets. So let's dive right in, shall we? And so to get to Google Sheets, if you are in a Google Chrome browser, you can easily get to it by using the little Google Apps uh, grid up at the top corner. And you can go directly to Sheets down here, or you can use Drive to go to um, documents that you've already created. So if you don't happen to be working in a Chrome browser, you can still easily get to this. You just want to type in the web address or have it bookmarked if you are frequently using it. Um, so this is the basic web address up here. Um, so from Sheets, you have a few different things that you can see here. Um, there is a starting a new sheet bar up at the top here. So this is where you would go to if you are wanting to get started. You can open up a blank spreadsheet, which if you click on it, it opens up a new spreadsheet right where you're in the same tab. It doesn't open a new tab. If you were to do uh, opening a 
new spreadsheet from Drive, which looks like this here, you'd go to the plus sign button and you'd open Sheets. If you clicked just directly on here, it would immediately open a blank spreadsheet. But if you want to do a template, you can do the um, pop-up drop down here. And that one would open a new tab. So that's something to keep in mind with how you work. Um, we'll back up here. If you're wanting to do a template, it will typically show you uh, templates most relevant to stuff that you've done recently, or if you've opened a template frequently, it'll pop up at the top here. But you can see all of the templates available by clicking on the template gallery, and it'll drop down and give you a view of all your options. Now, because Sheets is significantly newer than Excel, there selection for templates is pretty small. Um, they have them subdivided by categories. You've got personal options here, work-related ones, project management, and then a few for education. And these typically focus on teachers, but there is one for assignment tracking. So that's a kind of a student-oriented template that you can use there. We'll go ahead and open a template just so you can see it. We'll open the monthly budget template. And the neat thing about templates is they come with usually instructions up at the top of how to use it, notes that are important for you to keep in mind. Um, and then in this one, you can see that the highlighted cells are the ones that you're allowed to edit and the ones without any highlighting are the ones that you're not supposed to touch. Um, and we'll get into protections that help prevent editing in just a moment. So those are the ways to create new documents. What if you already have a document that you want to look at? Well, in Sheets, which you can either hit the back button or you can hit this little uh, icon up here and it'll take you straight to the Sheets home. Um, either way works. So if you have something you want to open already created for Sheets, there's a few different options. So you can come down here to the Recent Spreadsheets view and it'll put all of them right here. Um, you can narrow down what you're looking for by changing who owns the document because in Sheets, as well as the other Google Suite programs, you can share your documents with other people and other people can share their documents with you. So if you're wanting to look for something you personally have created, you can select Owned by Me and it'll narrow down your options. You can also change the look. This is the tile view, which gives you a little mini preview of the document. Um, but if you are more of a fan of uh, lists, there's a list view option. And the nice thing about this is it does uh, allow for a bit more viewing of items. So if you have a lot of items you're wanting to look through, you can use list to kind of help get a better at glance view of that. You can also change how it is organized by when it was last opened, how it was last modified, or you can alphabetize sort them. And then there's one final way to open documents and that's the open file picker. If you click on that, it does look at all of the uh, documents that you have, all the files in your Google Drive, but it narrows that down by adding a uh, filter at the top. Uh, one thing that I've noticed with this particular method is if you've created a Google form, uh, which is another of the web apps that Google offers, for some reason, those will show up in here as well if you've linked them to a spreadsheet, um, which is a whole nother thing, but just so that you know that can pop up in here if you've got a form that's attached to a spreadsheet. So that's your way to do it through the Sheets website. If you were going through your drive, um, you can easily narrow down the documents that you're looking for because when you're looking, it'll show you all of the files that are available. You can go up to the search in Drive and select your file type, so spreadsheets, and it narrows it down for you. And that is the other way you can open a document. Do we have any questions so far? 
Not so far. Okay, then we will move right along. So the next important thing to be able to do is importing files. So if you've been working on a document on Excel and you want to be able to store it and access it on the go, uh, uploading it is the best way to do so. You'll be able to access it from any device, be it mobile or desktop, uh, as long as you've got internet access. So to do that from your Sheets page here, the only way to do that is to go through the Open File Picker and use upload. And then you can either drag your file name from your, desk, uh, from your computer desktop, wherever you have it stored, the folder that it's in, and drop it in here. Or you can use the select a file from your device and it'll open up a little window to pick from. Now, something to keep in mind, when you use it through Sheets, it will automatically convert it to Sheet format. It will not stay in Excel format. So if you're wanting to keep that Excel format, it's better to upload it through Google Drive. To do that, you can come back up here to the new plus icon, and it has file or folder upload. File upload is good if you're doing um, one or two uh, files. Folder is great if you need the whole folder. Uh, if you happen to have, say you're working on budgets and each budget has its own separate sheet or each year has its own separate sheet and you want access to all of those, you'd want to pick the folder upload option. And that'll help keep it organized in the same manner that you had it on your computer. So I'll demonstrate that real quick just so you can see how it uploads. These are some schedules we have for work. So I'll just demonstrate with one of those. Hit open. And you'll see it uploading here with a little notification. And if you click on this, it'll pull it up for you and let you view it. Now, if it's still in Excel format, if you haven't uploaded it through the Google Sheets page, um, if you want to edit it, you can open it with Google Sheets using that. And it still keeps it in Excel file format. You'll see the XLSM, which is noting the format up here. And you can edit it and keep it in that format. Um, something to keep in mind is when uploading documents in different formats, the formatting of the document may change just due to the differences in the two programs. Um, Excel may have some fonts that Sheets doesn't have and vice versa. But Sheets uh, and Excel are both fairly similar. You don't run into as much formatting issues as you do with uh, the Google Docs and Word because um, it's a fairly standard setup. But if like there's a formula that's not necessarily the same or written out differently, you may have to check your formulas. So something to keep in mind on that. If you decide you want to convert it and have it in Sheets format, you can come up here to File and Save as Google Sheets. And when you do that, it will open it up here. And you will see the extension is gone. So now it is in Sheets format. Um, and something to keep in mind as well with this is you actually end up, let me back it out of the preview here. You end up with, let's see if we can bring it up. You end up with having both the uh, Excel and the Sheets files. I'm trying to see where I've saved them. It's not showing up on here. Let's go back to our drive and see if it, we can see it. Oh, and two other places, I almost forgot, two other places you can look for files. If you're, you know you've worked on it recently, in Google Drive you can go to Recent and it'll show you stuff that you've worked on in the past day, in the past week, and earlier. So here we go. Here's my examples. So you can see the Excel sheet has the extension written out, but it also has a little X icon by it, whereas the Sheets format version has the Sheets icon beside it. So that's just some interesting things to note about when you're uploading files. Any questions so far?
We do have one question about working with Excel files. So mm -hmm. if you could talk a little bit about if you upload an Excel file into Google Sheets and make those changes, do those changes appear in your Excel document? So what it does is it, those changes happen and are permanent to the document that you have uploaded. It does not change the document that is still on your device, on the um, hard drive or USB that you have it saved to. Um, so if you're wanting to see those changes, you would have to then download the Excel file from Google Docs, or sorry, Google Drive or Google Sheets. You pick the download option and you'll have access to the changes there. Um, if you want to, you can save it over the file that you've already got there if you don't plan to need that newer version. Or if you wanna keep both versions, then you might want to rename that. And we'll get into a little more of how to download documents at the end of the program. Uh, did that answer the question? We'll assume so unless we hear otherwise. So we'll keep moving yes, on. Yes, we are good. Here. Okay, good, good. Um, so another thing to keep in mind is deleting files. Um, so this is important because sometimes you wanna get rid of the mess that you've built up uh, or sometimes you accidentally delete something and you need to find where it's gone to. So let's talk about that real quick. So let's say I've decided, you know what? I don't wanna work on week one scheduling, let's get rid of that. You can come over here to the little drop down and go to remove. And that will remove it to the trash folder. You can hit the undo button here and it'll bring it back. But that little pop up is time sensitive. If you don't notice it and the little thing disappears, then all you have to do to restore something that you've accidentally removed is go to your trash bin. To get there, got to go back to our Google Drive. We've got our little trash folder here. And this is all the stuff that you have removed from various locations. And it stays here until you get rid of it. It doesn't, there, as far as I have been able to tell, there's not a way to set up an automatic cleanup, much like your email box would have. You have to come in and manually purge all the documents out. Uh, you can do that though by emptying trash, or if you want to keep a few things in here because, oh, you might need it later, but you don't want it to clutter up your files that you have, you can permanently delete them by right-clicking and delete forever. And if you do that, it is never, ever coming back. Now, the restore option here is how you get it back into the Google Drive where you can access it and work on it. So if you've accidentally sent something here and you didn't mean to, you can easily hit restore and it pops it right back into Google Drive for you. So let's pop back into our, I've got too many things going up here. Let's get rid of them. Oh, and when you do move them to trash, uh, if you happen to still have the tab up, this is important because with it being all web-based, you could have a bunch of things opened. Um, it does let you know, oh no, your file is in the trash. If you want to keep it there, it'll just pop you back to the Sheets home screen. Or if, oh, you now realize I didn't want to do that, you can take it out of the trash and keep working on it. Um, it also lets you know that if it was shared, as long as it's in the trash, people can still make a copy of it and it won't be inaccessible to people you shared with until it's fully deleted. So let's go back to our Sheets here. All right, any questions about deleting files or any of the other stuff we covered so far. We are good so far. Yay, okay then. Um, then I guess let's move on to how to navigate the spreadsheet. So this is something that some of you may be familiar with. So let's, let's see how many of you have used Excel before. Go ahead and raise hands and see what our total looks like on that. Can determine whether or not I can glaze right over this real quick or if I need to go a little more in depth. Okay, it looks like so far roughly half of you have used Excel before. So 
we will we will cover this a little bit but not too much but enough for all you people who have never worked with a spreadsheet type software before so in our blank unaltered brand new spreadsheet here we have the title of our document up at the top we have our menu bars up here with all of our different menu options and then our helpful toolbar and this has a selection of various things that you would find up here as well um, but made easy access um, there are a few things on here that do not show up in the menu bar which is a little different than excel excel everything in the menu bar everything in the toolbar is found in the menu bar um, but this one there are a couple of things that uh, do not and i'll cover those as we talk about adding text to the document in a spreadsheet you have a collection of columns which are a little, um, letter notated up here and then you have rows that are numbered and put together they make cells so you have a collection of cells you can easily use these for just about any purpose you can get real creative with it um, i've used it for scheduling like i said for budgeting all sorts of stuff and then at the very bottom you have access to your different sheets within your document so in excel a excel file is called a workbook and then each sheet in that is a spreadsheet uh, google sheets is just a spreadsheet with different sheets inside of it so um, the terminology is fairly similar but just different enough that it could get confusing um, but you can have multiple sheets at the bottom you can add sheets down there and um, you can see all the sheets that you have and you can do a bunch of different things with those and with those you can either click on the drop down here or right click on it to get um, renaming you can change colors to help color coordinate it to help them stand out this is also where you can protect your sheet and i'll get into details about what that means um, and you can move it using this but you can also drag and drop it to reorganize your sheets in whatever order you need them to be in um, so get rid of that and the nice thing of duplicate is um, if you use duplicate so let's say you've got a sheet exactly how you want it but you need it let's use an example of the monthly uh, budget let's pull that up here we've got it so let's say you've done this and you love it and it's perfect but you want to have multiple months on here you want to change this into an annual budget you can change the names on these and then you can copy them or duplicate them to be the different months so you can add that there and it'll keep the exact same format it'll look exactly the same and that's a good way to once you've perfected what you're wanting your sheet to look like you can apply it to different things you can also copy sheets and move them to new documents or existing documents as well by using copy to so those are just a few of those functions there let me get rid of that There we go. So, any questions about the basic layout of our spreadsheet? No? It looks okay. like we're right on track so far. Yay, fabulous. So, let's move on to editing and formatting spreadsheets. So, we'll work with something that's actually got a bit of meat already in it. Um, so to point out before i forget um, something to note is in your unaltered spreadsheet you notice that there's lines visible here for yourself these actually will not print unless you uh, specify so um, so if you're wanting to have those show up there's ways to do that and we'll talk about that by adding borders which is why when you look at this one here they have actually turned off the if I can find it view they've turned off the grid lines because they want it to look a little more like a opened document um, 
so they've got it those turned off if you were to turn it on you'd see oh yeah there's all the different cells there but that makes it look a little less neat and tidy so they just turn those off it's an aesthetic choice so you can pick how you'd like it to look um, so that's just something to keep in mind so getting into adding and editing text so the first major thing you want to be able to adjust is the title of your document so when you do a template it automatically names it the same name as the template if you do a new spreadsheet it will name it new spreadsheet or if you have multiple spreadsheets that have not been had their names changed yet it'll start numbering them so spreadsheet one two three so on and so forth um, so let's say we've decided we want to get our budget in order for the next month so september you just click on it and you type it out does help if you spell the month right there we go uh, once you're done typing in there, you can either hit enter or click anywhere outside of the box and your name is automatically changed. Um, so some notes about the icons up here. The star is a feature of making documents easy to find. There's a star folder in Google Drive. So anything that you star will end up in that folder. So that's just another way to help organize. And then you've got the option to move. So if you decide you want to move it somewhere else in your drive. And then this little cloud up here is a reminder that your document has saved. If you see the little cloud with a check mark by it, it is saved and it automatically saves as you work. Uh, though something to know that is slightly different from Google Docs, Google Docs will, want, as soon as you start typing, the little icon here will get a saving across the top um, and it saves as you type with sheets it actually does not save until you stop editing a cell so for example say we want to add a dollar amount to how much food we're going to do here so we're going to allow a hundred dollars for the month as you can see right now it's not been as entered yet i still can type all i want in the cell and there's nothing going on up here because it only saves once you're done editing and it shows saving and then saved to drive so that's just something to keep in mind if say for some reason your computer crashes while you are working on typing a complex formula and you haven't hit enter yet that complex formula is probably lost. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so moving on, cells are pretty easy to work with. You can start typing without having to do anything as long as the cell is highlighted. And what it will do, it is, it'll override the information that is in that cell. So for this one that has zero in it, if I type 75, it automatically deletes that zero and puts 75 in. But say you have a big number in here and you made one small mistake and you don't wanna to have to retype the whole thing over again, you can double click and that'll allow you to edit the information that is in that cell. Another way to do that is to come up here to the formula bar up here or function bar and you can type it in up here if you click and that'll let you edit without overriding the data in the cell. So any questions about that? Pretty similar to, well, exactly the same, honestly, to how it works in Excel. Um, something to keep in mind as you're adding information, especially if you're working with a template, some of the cells in the template are going to be protected and it doesn't want you to edit that. And that's because it usually got some complex formula where if you make even one slight small change, it doesn't work anymore. Um, and to prevent that, if you started trying to type on it and then save it, it does a pop-up. Now, this does not completely stop you because if you hit okay, it will override that change. But as long as you're make, paying attention to the pop-up, you can prevent changing anything. Now, if you're wanting to make changes to something that's protected and you're okay with it, 
you can hit don't show this again for five minutes and that'll allow you to do changes without having to unprotect the whole sheet which can be helpful because it is a few steps to do protecting and unprotecting so if you're wanting to do changes that's an option because if you don't check that every single time you try to change a cell that is protected this will pop up and that can get real annoying if you are wanting to make those changes so something to keep in mind um, and as i mentioned autosave it's really great that's one of the big perks of working in a cloud-based application um, Basically, you don't have to worry about remembering to hit that save button in case of emergency. It will take care of it for you. Um, like I said, there are, is a limitation, but it's really not a huge one. Um, usually losing one tiny bit of information in a cell because you didn't save or your computer crashed while you had a cell open, not the end of the world. All right, so moving into ways that you can edit your information. Something that is always useful is the undo and redo parts of your toolbar. So these are how you can easily undo a change that you didn't intend to do or you know a few changes back um, or redo something that you accidentally undid and oh hey actually I wanted to keep that. So these two are great. Um, as you can see, when you hover over it, it also shows you the shortcut, which is Control Z and Control Y, so you can use those. Um, pretty much all of the shortcuts that you're familiar with in using uh, any Office document or um, Office Suites program are, applies here. So your standard copy, paste, uh, cut, all of those shortcuts are the same. So moving on, we also have a few other great things on here. Zoom is not a editing feature, but if you need to be able to see your document in its entirety, you can zoom out to look at it. If you wanna get closer to work on a particular part of it, you can. Um, we've got formatting options for the numbers up here in this little section. We've got font with a drop down selection here, and it shows you the different styles by actually writing the font names out in those styles. You can also get more fonts, uh, which I believe is a feature from add on that will add it in there. Your recent ones are up at the top so that you can keep the formatting the similar. Font size, your bold italic strike through. Now, the text color, these, this is one of the ones that is not available in the drop down bar. Um, so, text color, if you want to change that, this is your only way to do that. Uh, also, filling in your cells. So, this here has fill to show you where you can type, but say you wanted your actual budget to stand out a little more, you can change the fill color. Let's say we want it to be pretty and green. Now, because it's protected, it's saying, oh, are you sure you want to? Yeah, that's fine. And that changes the cell colors to green. Now, you'll notice that this one actually has lines. So if I want that to match up, another feature on the bar up here is gonna be the borders. But if I click here and select the border as it is, and here I'm gonna, turn that off so I don't get a million pop-ups because I'm changing things. It does the default of black. If I'm not sure what color those lines are, instead I can use the Format Painter to bring my format over to this side. So you can either highlight a couple of cells if they all have the same format, or you can just pick one cell. You don't need to use a bunch. You click on the Format Painter and then Make sure you click and drag to highlight all the cells you want to copy it over to. And bring that color back. There we go. There's your lines. Now the reason it turned white is because the default format for this is actually white. What's causing this particular fill is called conditional formatting, but that is a advanced topic. That is where 
specific conditions cause the cells to do certain things like change the color of the font, change the size, or in this case, highlight the cells. So, but that's a topic that we could get into at a later date if you all are interested in an advanced class, so let us know. Um, some other things to note on the bar up here. So, um, toolbar only specific stuff. You can only format up here. Let's see, I'm trying to remind myself which ones are toolbar only. Ah, so any of the cell formatting, um, this here with the border and all of that, this is all toolbar specific. It's not available in the drop down. So if you're wanting to add borders to your cells, if you're wanting to color your cells, that's going to be toolbar specific. Um, fortunately, the font up here, you can access from either format or the toolbar except for the color. But most of the features for fonts are available up here as well. So you've got um, your bold italic underline, your font size, your alignment, um, all of that's in format. So some other things that you can change up here to personalize it, uh, you can also do text wrapping. Um, this is handy for if your text gets farther out than the size of your cell. So let's see if I can find a good example. So this one's almost there. So let's say we had hmm, custom super category. So right now, the font does not wrap around, it just cuts off. And so you lose that number one. If you're wanting it to wrap around, you can either come up here and pick um, wrap, which will make your cell bigger. Or you can also do that from here and you can pick your options. And it has little pop-ups that tell you what those icons mean. So, any questions about formatting? Not at this time. Okay. Um, quickly bouncing back to our numbers because that is a gigantic box of worms, but is indeed interesting. Number formatting is what kind of really makes uh, sheets handy. Um, you can set up number formatting so that everything comes out looking nice and uniform. Um, right now, this has a dollar sign added to the format, which is up here. You can format it as a currency. Uh, you can format as percentage. You can move your decimal places around. And then for more options, you can drop down. Now, most of the stuff you'll be using a spreadsheet for is number-based, which is why the formatting is mentioned under number rather than cell format. Um, but if you ever are using it for text, like in these situations here where you've got, you know, your categories written out, you do have the option to do plain text. Um, Automatic will do a best guess based on what you've typed in there. So if, say, um, you have Automatic set to, let's see if I can find a good cell to demonstrate that on. And we'll just add a new blank sheet to play with so I can demonstrate that. So with Automatic turned on, you've got a little check mark by it to know that it's on there. If you were to write out 100 and then add a decimal point with two zeros, it will guess that that is a basic number but if you were to do a date, say today's date, 831, and have that slash, if you, even if you end without the year, it will guess that you're going for a date and it'll add the current year there. Now, if you're working with dates and you're doing something other than the current year, you're going to want to actually type in the exact year because otherwise it will automatically assume you're working with the current year but that's just something to keep in mind with formatting. Um, but if you don't want it to automatically jump to a different format, you can select specific ones and it will lock it in as that. And if you type it in, type in something that's not convertible, something that doesn't match the format, it will do its best, but sometimes you end up with some very bizarre 
um, situation. So like if you had a date in here and you decided you wanted to convert it to accounting, it does some crazy math to go, this is what I think you meant. Um, it, it tries, but it's nowhere near what you mean. And that's where your undo bar comes in very ha handy. So bouncing back here. So aside from formatting in the cells, there's a lot of adjusting that you may want to do with your rows and columns. So this one here, it's got all of the rows and columns all figured out to meet the needs for what's already set up. But say you'd want to put these two graphics a little closer together, you can get rid of some of the space there by either adjusting up at the top, and yes, I know, it's been more than five minutes, um, and that'll allow you to shift it. and move it back and forth. You can also come here and see, resize your column. And this one allows you to get a little more specific with your sizing. The dragging it will visually get it where you want to, but if you're wanting everything to be exactly the same spacing, uh, you can type your pixel amount in here and make sure that they all match the same. If you don't care about them being exact, but you want them to fit your data, it, you can collect, select fit to data and it will shrink or expand to fit that information. So for example, when we were talking about our option over here with our super custom category that cuts off. So say you want to keep it all the same um, width for your rows, you can opt to make your column wider by selecting, uh, there we go. Helps if you pick the right one. There we are. Resize column. B and C, and I would recommend highlighting both of them. In this situation, what they did is they merged two of the cells together. Um, so column B and C at this particular point are joined, um, and so you'll get the best ability to adjust your size by picking resize, and then fit data, and it's actually expanded because one of the rows up here is wider. So let's see if I can undo that. Na, 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 na. Okay. This is what happens when you work with a template that you yourself did not create. I will figure out how to adjust that in a moment and get back to you. But you can also, like I said, just grab and drag. Hey, look, now I can see the one. Um, for rows, you can shift the same way by clicking and dragging or resizing your row. Now, if you need to add rows, you can definitely do that easily. You can pick where you want to add them and insert to the left, insert to the right. It gives you options. Um, you can also choose to come up here at the drop down menu and you can add a column to the left or a column to the right. Does the same for rows. So right click gives you those options there, as well as insert up here. Um, this is also where you can delete a row. You can clear a row, hide a row, and hiding a row is handy if you have some information that is needed but not necessary to see. So, uh, for example, say you have these drop downs here, all of this information 
is actually kept in a separate location. With this one, it's kept in the summary, but uh, sometimes it's just in a separate area, a separate column or row, and you don't need to see it. You can hide it and still have access to the dropdown. So being able to hide stuff is handy for being able to have pertinent information without it distracting. Or if say you're looking at a, a schedule um, and you only want to see a certain number of days, you can hide those days um, that you don't want to see and you're, what you're able to look at is easy to adjust. And that doesn't delete the information, it just temporarily hides it. Um, so I'll demonstrate that real quick because it's, it's kind of interesting to see. So you do hide column. And now it goes straight from E to G, and you see the little arrows there. And if you were to click on that, it instantly unhides F. It's very easy to get it back into view. Any other questions? No, ma'am. All right. Very nice. Oh, also, in relation to moving rows and columns, um, if you need to move a row and you don't want to mess up anything else, you can click and drag it. And uh, this one won't let me because of all the merged cells. Let's demonstrate on a blank sheet here. So let's say you've got a few dates. And in theory, this has a bunch of information that you don't want to have to retype, you don't want to have to do anything crazy with, but oh no, your dates are out of order. You can drag and move your whole column and it'll shift over. Um, this same thing can be accomplished by copying and pasting, but then you have to copy, insert a new cell. It's a lot of work. It's a lot easier if you just drag and drop it to re-sort it around. So that's fairly easy to do. Um, if you want to move an individual cell, you can similarly drag it and drop it. But with cells, um, it typically does not shift the data. It usually just covers up whatever you've dragged it on top of. And then it's gone. So You'll want to keep that in mind with cells. If you're wanting to move and uh, flip cells around, it's typically a better idea to insert a new cell where you're wanting it to be. Um, so insert a cell and it'll ask you if you want to shift to the right or shift down and you can then put your information there without having to worry about copying uh, over your information. So demonstrate that real quick. So you just insert cell to the right and move it on over. And then you can delete the cell and shift it back. So that's a, a, a way to get around the accidentally copying over your data and losing information. Any questions? No, I think you're good to go. All right. Um, and our final thing to discuss as far as uh, customizing your spreadsheet is freezing rows and columns. So this is really handy if, especially for like schedules, if you've got uh, your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday up here. So, and I'm gonna share a slightly advanced uh, trick with you guys. If you click on the little square there, it will autofill to the best of its ability with its, you know, algorithms to replicate your information. So if you type Monday, it automatically starts filling in the days of the week. It does that with numbers too. Like I said, it tries its best. It's not 100% perfect. Sometimes you have to give it a little bit more to work with. But uh, 
for my purposes so I can demonstrate this nicely. Say you have a schedule with the days of the week and your information just goes all the way down to the bottom and beyond. And you wanna keep those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday up at the top. You can freeze the cells so that they don't shift and your information is able to scroll up and down. So to do that, the easiest way, honestly, is there's these two bold lines in the corners up here. You just click and drag it down to where you want your information to freeze. And then the one stays up at the top and your other cells scroll up and down. You can also do that with columns as well by moving that over and then your columns will stay put. So that's very handy to have. If you have a list of like an inventory and you have a checkout log that goes on for days, you can keep the names of your inventory items here and then move back and forth to see when those items were checked out. So that's a real quick, easy way to do it. Another way to do it is to use the menu bar and come up here to view and freeze. And it has some uh, defaults of where you can freeze there. So that's the other way to do your freezing. In your view menu, there's also some options. You can see the formulas typed out. So if you wanna see the chaos that is our monthly budget here, if you click view and then show formulas, these are the formulas that are in all of these blanks here, all of these cells. So you can have a look at what is a formula, what isn't. Um, so that's a, a nice little feature. And you can turn that off. And you can also see your grid lines. Uh, you can view your protected ranges up there. So handy stuff. And of course, Zoom, like I mentioned. If you're wanting to, you can also work in full screen. Um, I'm not gonna click on that just because, uh, well, let's go ahead and demonstrate it. Um, you have to hit escape to get back and see all of your controls, but you can do this if you're wanting to kind of see a wider view of what you're working on. So let's back it back out. You can also click over here to hide your menus, which basically is a instant full screen. So that's an option there. Let's see, any questions about editing and formatting the spreadsheet? No, not on editing or formatting. Okay, um, as far as highlighting cells, uh, I did kind of demonstrate that a little. Um, if you're wanting to highlight so that you can do formatting changes, you can either click and drag to highlight an area. You can also, uh, if you're wanting to do changes to a whole column or a few columns, you can click and drag the columns up here, or same with the rows, click and drag. But if you're wanting to say, this one's all in Arial, or actually, my, my bad, it's in Lato. Let's say we want Arial instead. You can click the little square that's made up here and it highlights the entire spreadsheet that you have. Um, and so then you can change your font. And yes, I know. And that'll change everything in the spreadsheet for you. So that's a, a little handy thing to know about. Uh, I mean, you can also do this with Control A and that will do the same thing. So that's a shortcut for that. All right, so if there's no questions about formatting, um, then we can move on. Um, ooh, one tiny bit of information with data entry, just so you know. This one already has a whole bunch of formulas filled in so you don't actually have to do any formula making for it. But if you were to make your own budget from scratch um, to write a formula where it does the math for you, you always start with a equal sign. And then there are a bunch of ones that you can type out yourself or you can come up here to the functions which are pre-written formulas. And you can use these up here are basically the most common ones or you can sift through them by their purpose. Um, all of them, you can scroll, 
or you can look at stuff that's specifically related to dates, stuff that's related to finance, um, all sorts of options in here for you. Typically, if you're doing a budget, your most common ones are going to be the sum function, uh, as well as subtract, which isn't a function. That one you have to write out manually. Um, so this one gives you a little guide of how to use it. It tells you an example, um, and you follow along. If you're wanting to do subtract, where you actually have to write it out, I'll just demonstrate that real quickly for you. Um, you can either click on the cells that you're wanting to do the math for. And th the nice thing about that is it will allow you to change the data in those cells and have it automatically calculate. So if you enter 100 minus zero, of course, is going to be zero. A blank cell is always going to default to zero. Um, but then you could enter information in, and it'll automatically calculate it for you. And that's really handy for if you are doing a lot of calculations or just need to find the difference of your monthly budget. Okay, so let's move on to printing and downloading. So you've got your completed document. You are happy with it. You love it. You're good to go. Um, once you're ready to print it out, if you want a paper copy of it to keep with you, you can come up here to File. You can also hit the little printer button here. This is a shortcut for it, or Control-P. Um, but File is the menu that you would use, and you would come down to Print at the very bottom. And in your print window, it shows you a handy preview. This one has defaulted to being landscape view, but you can change it to portrait if that suits your printing needs better. You can also change the scale. This is really handy for if you have a lot of information, um, but you want it all to fit on one page. So like this one here, in its full 100% size scale, you get the top corner, which is super not helpful, and then it breaks it up onto other pages, and you'd have to piece it together with tape. That would be no fun. So instead, you can do fit to width, and it makes it fit across the columns. You can also select fit to height, which would make all of the rows fit on there, or fit to page, which would make sure that all of your document, uh, all of your cells for your document fit onto one page. This one's a good option for if you're not sure whether or not your thing would overflow in either row or, or column. Um, margins are also a, a good way to make sure it fits and is legible. Your normal margin is going to default to one inch all the way around. Narrow, I believe, is typically uh, 25, um, not 25, 0.25 or one fourth of an inch all the way around. Um, and then wide, I think, is an inch and a half, uh, but you can also set custom numbers and adjust by typing in the amount that you want on the top, bottoms, and rights. You can also insert page breaks, which is where if you have text that is going to end up getting shrunk down too small if you try to fit it all on one page. A custom page break will allow you to cut off your information in a way that is more convenient for you. Um, and it'll shrink down the, the text to fit based on where you set those page breaks. So, and it lets you know what scale you end up at up here, and then you can confirm it. So that's all a bunch of different options there. You can also, this is where if you do want those grid lines that are going to be there, you can either turn them on or turn them off. Any notes that you've taken can be shown. And you can also pick the page order and how it's aligned. And if there's headers and footers. Um, this is a lot less common with uh, spreadsheets, but sometimes maybe you want to have the current date on there to, so you can keep track of your versions. You can add those on. Um, you can also do page numbers. If you're in a meeting with people and want to be able to say, turn to page 23, page numbers comes in very handy. 
All right, that was a lot of stuff just for printing, but there's other options. So let's say you don't want to have a paper version of your document, but you want to have a version you can share. Uh, there's a few ways to do that. You can either download it, and that'll give you a few different options of formatting. It does not download in the Sheets format because Sheets is the only uh, application that uses that format. So for convenience of being able to open it up elsewhere, you want to pick the format for whatever you're wanting to work with. Most common is of course going to be Excel and that will allow you to still edit the document. If you want to share it but you don't want people to mess with anything, you can use a PDF uh, format and the PDF format will keep the exact formatting of your document and share the information and it locks it in place basically. So that's a good option there. Um, you can also email as an attachment and when you click on that you get the option of writing the email, your, uh, the email address of the person you're sending it to. There's an option to send a copy to yourself which is handy because then if somebody goes oh I never got it you didn't send it to me you've got a digital basically receipt that you did send it so you can tell them to check their spam or whatever to see if they can find it. You can type a little message and then again, you'd have to select which type of uh, format you want. Um, unlike Google Docs, which allows you to embed the uh, document in the email, Google Sheets does not allow that. So you have to pick a format here and it'll attach it. And then of course, there is the ability to see or to make a copy. This is handy for if you are, since this is a monthly budget and honestly, because there are two tabs, it would be a whole lot of tabs to keep a whole year's worth in here. Um, if you want to use this same budget and you filled in all of the numbers and you want the planned budget to carry over from month to month, then you can just make a copy and then you could name it, well, we've got September already taken care of, let's name it December. And it'll make an exact copy of it for you. Um, you can also use this as a point to share it with people that you've already shared it with um, or copy any comments that you've made. And it automatically shares or copies it and then opens up the new copy that you've made. So, um, very handy for being able to keep a running num exactly the same uh, document collection. Like I said, great for budgets. Any questions about those features? Looks like you are good on those. And we are already at two o'clock. My, how time has flown. Do we have any questions we can answer quickly before the end of our program? You did have a couple of questions come through earlier on sharing your documents with others to collaborate. Can you touch briefly on what that looks like? Absolutely, we will do the speedy version on that. Up here, you see share. You click on that and you type in people you want to add. Um, so if they have their own uh, Gmail or if you've corresponded with them before, it will autofill uh, as, you know, just easy peasy. If you have not, you can type in their email address up here. Um, it relates to, so like for example, let's see if I've got it in here. Well, for myself, if I type in my whole name rather than my email address, let's see if it'll work. Well, I don't have a good example, unfortunately. If you type in somebody's name, it'll automatically fill them in there. You don't have to type in their email address if they're part of your uh, contacts in Google. I obviously need to expand my contact list, but this is my work Gmail, so I don't use it that often, honestly. Um, you can edit how you share with people. So 
from that setting cog up there, you can select whether or not editors have uh, per can change permissions and share as well. Um, and then you can select whether or not viewers can see options to print, download, and copy. So that's handy for if you decide you want to add a person, let's say add my own thing, you get the option of editor. So if you want them to be able to change stuff, but you don't want them to also then share it with everybody they know, in the settings, you can uncheck that box and they can still change things, but they don't have uh, as much control as you do. Um, you can limit it to being able to only view, which is handy if you don't want any changes that could mess up what you've done. And commenter is a great way to get feedback without actively changing your document. So for commenters, let me back it up just a little bit. And you can also share a link. So uh, if you were to copy the link and paste it into an email, it's not as secure as giving that person directly um, access to the document because anybody who has access to that email can then open up the document and do whatever they're going to do with it. So for the most secure, you want to share directly to a person, but if you don't care particularly, you can use the get a link option and you can change who can come in depending on who has the link and what their options are on that. So it's very flexible with how you can share it. There's a lot of ways to restrict and prevent uh, unwanted changes. So if you had selected them to comment only, um, this is where they do their commenting. There's a little comment box up here. They can add comments and make comments on just about anything. Go, oh my gosh, this is so cool. How did you do this? Or, oh my gosh, this makes no sense. Why did you do this? Um, and then you can respond to those comments. You can also come up here to see the comment history and see what people have said. Okay, Whew. that was a whirlwind and I know we just barely grazed across the surface of it. Uh, so hopefully if we get enough interest of it, for it, we can get an advanced version of this going and really get into the nitty gritty of conditional formatting and formulas and functions and some fun advanced tips that we could share. Um, so let us know what exactly you'd like to see so that we can uh, figure out how best to go forward. We have a survey that will should pop up uh, with the program uh, either upon closing or it may already be up now. Um, fill that out. If you don't get a chance to or accidentally close the window before you get a chance to, the survey will be included in a follow-up email that should come in about four days uh, that also will include a recording to this program. So you can re-watch it if you miss some of it or if you'd like to go over a particular point again. So thank you all for coming out. We appreciate you being here. Oh, and I almost forgot. If you do have any more questions, we do have a book a librarian feature, which is available from our website. You can book a 30 minute virtual session um, and we'll be able to help you with specific details. Um, it is typically a very general covering of the topic. We'll do our best to get you set up uh, so that you can go from there. If you have more complicated questions or want to get really into learning how to use sheets, you can also use our lynda.com subscription through the library. Um, it's free with your library card and lynda.com has computer classes available, uh, all kinds, including Google Sheets uh, and all of the Google Suites programs, uh, as well as if you're interested in learning Excel or any of the Microsoft uh, applications. So check that out under our web page. I can actually show you that real quick. So from planolibrary.org, if you come to learn and then research and learn, you can come up to, there's, it's in a few different locations. Um, I find the technology and sciences works just fine. So this link right here, can click on either the icon or the link down there 
and you just sign in with your library card and your PIN number. So there we go. That covers everything, I think. Anything to add, Jamie? <laughs> I don't think so. I dropped a link for the Book Librarian service into the chat so that everyone can get to it easily. Awesome. Uh, and I will quickly drop in the link to Research and Learn. Let's see if it copies over nicely. It's not the most beautiful link, but it gets the job done, right? <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Like I said, not a pretty link, but it does work. All right, well, thank you guys for coming out. We appreciate it.